Hello Facebook, Prophet David Taylor here, here for your weekly live prophetic word. Let's dive right in. And oh wait, I gotta get this one recording started, I forgot about that. So let me get this other recording going. And boom, there we go. Okay, let's dive right in <clears throat> with a word of prayer. And then we'll get on to the prophetic word. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to hear from you. Thank you, O oh God, for your, your marvelous prophetic word. Thank you, O oh God, for your precious Holy Spirit, because we cannot do anything of ourselves, O oh, oh God, because Jesus said he is divine and we are the branches, O oh God. So we need you. So I invite you and invoke you into this teaching, O oh God. Breathe through me. I surrender my mind, my mouth, my words, everything to the Holy Ghost. Let everything be said to honor you. Let everything be said that you want to be said, that you might be glorified and the saints might be edified and the demons might be terrified. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's word is one word and it's specificity. Okay? Specificity. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me release the prophetic word that the Holy Ghost gave me, and then we'll look at our scripture reference. The Lord said, For behold, my people, the days come and now are, the time comes and now is, where you need to listen to me with specificity. You need to listen to me with an ear towards details. I want to speak to you about your college career. I want to speak to you about your relationship. I want to speak to you about your marriage. I want to speak to you about your finances. I want to speak to you about your diet. I want to speak to you about your time managing, time management. And I don't want to just be your savior. I also want to be your Lord. Therefore, my people, I release unto you a spirit of specificity and a spirit of hearing so you can hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and hear the details that I try to give you as I guide every element and every aspect of your life with my specific and detailed revelations. And as you listen to me and you learn to believe me and obey me in the details of your life, then you will see what it really looks like and feels like to truly be above only and not beneath, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. <clears throat> I got that prophetic word this morning, and uh, it blessed my heart. So what is our scripture reference, and what am I talking about, and what is the Lord talking about? Okay, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, very familiar passage of scripture. Um, you notice that whenever any, I teach any prophetic word, I always try to have it rooted in the scripture, rooted in something you can read in the Bible, so you can see the scripture reference, so you can see the foundation for what's being said, Okay. So Deuteronomy is the um, fifth book in the Bible. Uh, it's the last book that Moses wrote, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Uh, so fifth book at the top of the Bible, fifth book of the Old Testament, last book of what we call, of what the Jews call the Torah, or what we call the Pentateuch, and those are the five books of Moses. And I want you to remember, for those of you that think it might be too late to get your service to God going, President, uh, former President Jimmy Carter is about 93 right now. Well, that's the same age range Moses was in when he did everything he was famous for. Everything that Moses did that he's famous for, uh, the exodus, the ten plagues of Egypt, uh, you know, the frogs, the lice, the brimstone, the death of the firstborn, the Passover, the Ten Commandments, leading them through the wilderness, manna from heaven, quails from the sea, serpents that stung them, putting the brass serpent, serpent to heal them, parting of the Red Sea, parting of the water, pillar of uh, cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, the law, the Levitical priesthood, everything that Moses did that he's famous for, he did between the ages of 80 and 120. <clears throat> One more time. He did it between the ages of 80 and 120. So I just wanted to throw that out as encouragement for those of you that might feel like you're coming back to God <clears throat> too late or you're getting started too late or maybe you think you missed your window. I stopped by to tell you I, I don't recommend waiting until you get later in life but sometimes people don't receive their call till later in life. Like God called Abraham at the age of 75. 
So I want you to be encouraged if you're older and you're feeling like there's something God wants you to do, but maybe you don't have the time you thought you need to do it in. Get started and do it anyway, because everything Moses did that he's famous for, that we know him for, he did between the ages of 80 and 120 years of age. Okay, so we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, <clears throat> and I'm going to read all the way down through verse 14. Okay, so a lot of verses, but it's necessary for today's prophetic word. I'm reading out of the King James Version, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all thy settest, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Wow. Now that's one of the most famous and popular passages in the Bible, and many times people misquote it. But the point that I'm trying to make for you today is coming from that prophetic word that the Lord just shared with us about specificity and about listening to him, <clears throat> I want you to read what the scripture says. <clears throat> now, another thing you need to understand about scripture interpretation is that when you see the Bible or the Lord say anything at least twice, when he says it more than once, he says something at least twice, or the Bible says it over and over and over again, it's telling you to pay attention because this is super, super important. Obviously, everything in the Bible is important, but it's saying this is a point of emphasis, Okay. So it says, and it shall come to pass if thou, if you, shall hearken diligently. That word hearken, that's kind of an old English word. It means to listen, to listen with purpose, to listen on purpose. And then it says diligently. What does it mean to listen diligently? It means you listen on the regular. It means you listen with an ear towards detail. Okay, now I really can stop right there, and there's some stuff I want to throw in there. This is why people that are CMEs never get the blessing that they want, because that is not what the Bible says. The Bible does not say be a CME, which is, which is Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. The Bible does not say <laughs> come to the house of God three times a year, uh, and you'll be blessed. The Bible does not say listen to God, you know, for 30 minutes on Sunday morning, and Excuse me, you'll be blessed. That's not what the scripture says. What the scripture says is that you got to listen to God with an ear towards detail on the regular. <clears throat> if there was anything I wish I could communicate to the body of Christ is that the scripture says you got to listen to God on the regular. There are plenty of Christians that I personally know that don't have daily quiet time. The way they start the day is they get up, maybe they get up late and run through the shower, uh, grab a cup of coffee, get the kids off to school, and they rush out the door to work. And they don't bother to take any time to spend time with the Lord. If you live that way as a Christian, you are spiritually malnourished. That's the same as you not uh, getting anything to eat all week 
and then on Sunday morning, you grab a bagel, or maybe you grab a ham and cheese sandwich, and that's all you eat. Well, you know that you can't, cannot sustain your body or your life eating one small meal once a week. You understand that in your body. I stop, try, I stop by to tell you that your spirit works the same way. You cannot sustain your spirit, feed your inner man, and sustain your walk with God the way you need to, eating one meal a week, like a Sunday morning sermon, or coming to the house of God just three times a year. Okay? The scripture says it shall come to pass. That means there's a time element. That means it doesn't just automatically happen. It's not just overnight. It shall come to pass if you shall listen or hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. Why? To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Stop. You've got to observe and to do. What does that mean? Well, that means that you have to keep it on a regular basis. Haven't you ever had an experience where you were about to do something and you knew you weren't supposed to do it? And it's almost like you had an out-of-body experience. It's almost like your spirit stepped out of your body and then you went over there and you did it anyway. And it's like you watched yourself do it. It's like you knew <laughs> that what you're doing wasn't right and you're yelling at yourself, what are you doing? Well, you're observing yourself doing something. And to observe in this context also means to keep it on a regular basis. Like we observe a holiday where we have Christmas at the same time every year. We have 4th of July in America at the same time every year. We have Thanksgiving at the same time every year. It means like that, both of those things. So to observe it and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. What does that mean? That means you have to listen to everything that God is saying. One more time. That means you have to listen to everything that God is saying. So the prophetic word for today was specificity. You have to listen to what the Lord is saying in detail. And then it goes on to say that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, you've heard me talk about it before on my No More Genies program about how people misteach this and how people talk about God said you're the head, not the tail. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that you've got to listen and do what the Lord is telling you to do over a period of time on the regular. Then God will set you high above all nations, okay? But the point I want to emphasize on today is that in that prophetic word, the Lord is saying that he wants to get into the small details of our life. What if the Holy Spirit convicts you and says, lose 30 pounds? Do you think the Spirit says stuff like that to people? He does. What if the Lord says, uh, make this investment, start this business? Do you think the Lord talks to people on that level? He does. See, if you just have religion and tradition and denomination, you just think about God in the house of God, and you probably think about it on the day of your worship. But if you have a relationship and you understand Jesus as a person, then you understand that the Lord will say stuff to you like, don't eat that. that might, that'll make you sick. Or the Lord will tell you to start a business. Or the Lord will tell you, we had, a, we had a very moving uh, service this morning because of one of our uh, prophets that have actually been with uh, Apostle Eckhart for 30 years was moving on to a new stage of her ministry. And they've been together decades, three decades, but she felt that call where God was moving her to the next thing. See, that's very specific, where God says, I'm graduating you to the next level. And I'm graduating you to a new thing. Okay? Uh, God will definitely tell you, don't marry that person. <laughs> God will definitely tell you, break up with this person. They're not the one. I don't want you with them. So many different things. God will convict you about TV shows. God will say, well, don't watch that because you don't need to feed your mind and your spirit with that. See, those are the specific details of your life. And a lot of people do not understand Jesus or follow him on that level because you don't expect the Lord to talk to you that way. But that prophetic word told us that we're in the time where the Lord wants to speak to you on the details. He wants to speak to you on the details of your career. Okay? Or let's say you, you, you want to go back to school. The Lord wants to tell you which school to go to. The Lord wants to tell you when to start classes. You know, spring, summer, fall, semester, winter. The Lord wants to tell you which classes to take. And the Lord wants to tell you what degree to get. Specific details. That's the way Jesus wants to fellowship with us. And when you begin to understand the Lord on that level, he begins to become not just your Savior, but your Lord. <clears throat> and
And then he starts orchestrating and he starts uh, telling you how to get to the specific details of your life. Okay? And that's how, according to the scripture, you get into the above only blessing. That's how you start to know what it means to be set high above all nations of the earth. Uh, again, in those verses, it says blessed, 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 blessed. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed is the fruit of your body. Fruit of your ground, cattle, kind, and sheep. Blessed is your basket and store. Blessed when you come in, blessed when you come out. So the Bible is telling you in no uncertain terms that the path to, to a 360 degree blessing where you're blessed in everything you do is obedience to the commands of God. I say that all the time and I'm going to keep on saying it because I'm trying to destroy a genie concept. I'm trying to stop this teaching that makes people feel like you can just do whatever you want to do and you're still going to arrive at a, pay, a place of blessing. That's not true. The Bible says you got to listen to the Lord with detail and that is where God is ready to move the body. Now, some stuff, you know, happened a long time ago. You've heard me talk about that before. But <clears throat> being the Lord of your life, like if the Lord tells you to establish a fast day, a day where you fast and pray. If the Lord tells you to maybe you work a certain shift on your job and the Lord tells you to see if you can get another shift, don't work that shift. Maybe you've been trying to find new employment and you keep finding all the doors closing. And then you ask the Lord and the Lord says, it's because I want you to start a business. I don't want you to any longer be an employee. I want you to be an entrepreneur. Whatever it is that God has for you, that's the thing. His details and his specificity is particular to your life. I'm talking about your living quarters, your home. I'm talking about the rooms in your home. Did you know that the Holy Spirit has a scripture for every room in your house? And did you know that you're supposed to bless the rooms of your house with that scripture so that you can create that atmosphere in that room? Did you know that? Did you know that, that God cares about the car that you drive? Yes, he does. And he will lead you to good deals. God cares about every little detail of your life. Um, I had a friend of mine tell me one time that she had to change her medication because the Holy Spirit told her to leave alone what she had because what she had was making her sick. And, he, and the Holy Spirit told her that before she went to the doctor. And she was not feeling good, didn't know what was going on, didn't go to the doctor. And the Holy Ghost told her, it's that medication, so get off that. And she felt better. So, I mean, every little detail of your life, Jesus cares about and he wants to be Lord over your life down to the, the specific details and that's how you get to fuller and fuller levels of blessing. And God is saying that's where he's trying to take us now. Okay? Amen and amen. So I'm going to go in the spirit and ask the Holy Ghost if there needs to be any deliverance, financial prophetics, uh, additional prophetics, or physical healing. Okay, looks like things are clear. If there are any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Now, if I don't pray for them live, it's because I don't see them. Because I can't see everything that's uh, popping up on Facebook nor on Periscope. So if you put a request on there and I don't pray for it, just leave it in the comments. And I'll be sure to pray for it when I'm done. Okay? All right. Well, God bless. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I challenge you and encourage you to get, let the Lord get specific with you so that he can give you the specific blessings and become <clears throat> Lord of your life and lead you to a place where you are above only and not beneath, where you're blessed everywhere you turn because you've been listening diligently to his voice and doing what he told you to do. All right? Amen. God bless. And I will see you this Thursday. Uh, no More Genies, the next installment is this Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Then I'll see you again on Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Amen and God bless.